In Final Fantasy XIV, and most games of this ilk, there is a concept known as uptime and downtime. Uptime refers to both the ability to hit a boss and the amount of time you are attacking, usually a percentage. As long as you keep your GCD rolling, that is, global cooldown, hitting your buttons and doing damage at all times you are physically able to, you are doing at least decently. Downtime, on the other hand, is times where it is impossible to hit a boss. They become invincible or leave the arena entirely. It can also refer to the rare, and let me emphasize, very rare, case that the boss is too far to be hit. This is almost impossible for ranged DPS, mage DPS, and healers. But melee and tanks have a range of only three yoms. Even at max range, you're right up against the boss. However, we have a ranged attack to fall back on. Piercing Talon, Six-Sided Star, Tomahawk, and so on. Yes, Six-Sided Star counts, and with basic math later in this video, we'll prove anyone who says Monk does not have a ranged option is almost guaranteed to be a bad player. That aside, we do have an emergency button to fall back on in the very rare cases we cannot use our melee skills. One of the key things to focus on when trying to improve as a player is ABC, always be casting. Always keeping your GCD rolling is high uptime. High uptime means higher damage by default, but when trying to keep uptime, many players fall into a couple of traps, mostly the melee players. So let's talk about uptime, downtime, and ways to improve upon your play. This is very much a surface level look at the topic. When you get into min-maxing, this topic goes so much deeper. And on the same token, this video is not min-maxing. The strategies involved in uptime have a significant overlap in how to properly deal with and resolve mechanics. Which, hey, I had a video on that too. I'm mentioning that one a lot recently, but because it's true. If you enjoyed this and want to see more, please hit the like button, comment, and subscribe. I also have a Twitch and a community Discord, found in the description. Show me whatever support you can as I continue to try and help everyone improve little by little. Let's get right into the show. So at the most basic level, ABC, always be casting. If you can attack, you should be attacking with whatever options you have. Mages who need to move have their instant and faster casting options and melees do have the range attack to fall back on. If your global cooldown buttons are bright and shiny, you're doing it wrong. Global cooldown being all skills with a shared 2.5 second cooldown, marked as weapon skills or spells. You want this circle spinning at all times. You want to be hitting the button slightly early due to a queuing system. The game will still register the use of the skill to be used even if pressed slightly early. Consider it about half a second of leeway at most. It does have its limits so you don't accidentally use something when you don't want to. Pressing the button repeatedly ends up being typical for players, just to ensure the game cues it and uses it as soon as possible. For the magic players in the audience, you have to learn to also slide cast to keep your GCD rolling. Slide casting is when you begin to walk around before your cast finishes. Normally this would cancel your cast, but if done within the last half second, the cast will complete, and you will have moved without punishment. Due to the nature of casting, and the limited nature of tools like swift cast, slide casting is your main way to keep ABCing. Anytime you need to move mid-cast, you can delay to the back half of the cast and dodge to the edge of the AoE. Given you're nearly always casting, that's just about every time you get a mechanic thrown at you. Well, unless you're a summoner. Then it becomes about planning to use your Ifrit phase when you don't need to move. I want to emphasize a point here. You want to dodge to the edge of the AoE. You do not need to move three character models away from the AoE. Your character has basically a single pixel of a hitbox in the center of your circle. Keeping this in mind, very skilled players will be able to stand in the tiniest safe spaces of a nearly completely orange floor. You don't need to go that far, but the lesson is one you should learn. These AoEs aren't radioactive. You can stand right next to them and face no punishment. I usually see mages and healers dodging out of an AoE, then keep going for another full second or two. This is very messy and an abject loss of uptime. When getting into higher level and higher tier content, messy movement like that has a ton of problems. If multiple AoEs go out as you run all over, the AoEs are spread out more and things are being made more dangerous. 
Constantly losing casts from moving too much means you lose chances to heal and make the DPS check tighter. Yes, Extreme and Higher has a minimum DPS requirement, so losing a ton of Fire Force is not so good. Then we can apply this even more to melee players. Oh boy, do I see melee players make so many uptime mistakes when there's absolutely zero reason to. The biggest and most common of these is max melee range. As mentioned, the range for melee skills is three yarms, but that's three yarms from the edge of the enemy's target circle. This pitiful range is still enough to dodge the pitiful size of most boss-scented AoEs. If a boss-scented AoE appears, move to the max melee range first. Check the size and whether you can keep attacking safely. Step two is to actually do a dodge. If the AoE is too big for you to max melee, get out of it. It's still not that simple though if you want to really push your uptime. An orange circle is in itself not dangerous. An orange circle disappearing is dangerous. There's a thing called snapshots, or the point in time where the damage is calculated. When you see a cast bar appear, damage will typically be calculated at the back 25% of the bar. Basically only when the bar is full. The rest of the bar? You're almost guaranteed to be safe to stand in the AoE. The dodge comes towards the end of the cast. I have seen so many melee players see orange or get an AoE on them, run super far away, and start spamming their ranged attack. And I'll be sitting on the boss doing my normal rotation with no issues. Three, four ranged attacks while I lose nothing? Sure, they're keeping up time, but they're not keeping up time. Without even accounting for lost auto attacks, Dragoon is the example I'll use. Piercing Talon is 150 potency, and our next weakest skill is 230 potency. That's 80 potency lost at a minimum. Every two Piercing Talons that, that player did, I would have gotten an extra Piercing Talons worth of potency and more. This usually isn't the end of when they'll spam their ranged attacks. They can do it when the enemy isn't even covered in AoEs. Or again, when they get an AoE, they run away from the boss. This runs them right into the arms of the people who should be away from the boss for spreading mechanics, like ranged players. If you stand close to the boss and spread nicely with your fellow melees, there's usually space for everyone. So uptime doesn't just get you uptime, it gets you mechanical safety. A melee should stay glued to the boss unless absolutely necessary. Higher damage and higher not getting other people killed. Let's concede that there are times where this course of action is more reasonable, even when still wrong. I love this bucket boss because he has a lot of downtime involved. He'll do this gigantic AoE into a knockback. With good play, this turns from lots of downtime into near full uptime. Taking Dragoon as an example again, I will only leave the boss at the very end with an elusive jump. I'll have to Piercing Talon one time, but then I can use Sprint to get back into range before my GCD rolls around. Then arm's length for ignoring the knockback. There's many other options too. Sprint out, then elusive back in. Or use Spine Shatter Dive to get back into range. In all examples, I use at most one Piercing Talon per round of mechanics. Your average melee DPS is going to run out super early and get two, three, or even four uses of their ranged attack when they had better options. They didn't understand how much time they had and ended up fleeing from danger that didn't even exist yet. In the end though, I'd like to point out the difference between one piercing talon and three or four. It's this behavior that typically leads players to complain that Monk doesn't have a ranged attack despite Six-Sided Star being one of the better ranged skills. Sure, it's still functionally a melee attack, but it has double the GCD time and gives you a sprint for five seconds. During the time it takes for Six-Sided Star's GCD to roll around, other melees would get one use of their ranged attack. It's functionally the same. The amount of GCD time is the same. The moment the orange of the AoE disappears, you can thunderclap back in immediately. The times where you need more than just six-sided star are so few and far between and probably didn't need anything more. 
Or like, it's Roth Flames and Drew. There's other exceptions here or there. Samurai's Yaten into MP is a pretty strong combo, to the point you might even use it rotationally based on your GCD speed. And Reaper's Harp is used to open fights due to its unique attribute of being a spell. The main point is, if you're pressing the button more than once at a time, you're probably overcompensating for dodging. Minimize your movements and keep close in. Strafe around a boss to dodge circles that appear under you and go for max melee for ones under the boss. Avoid using your ranged attack while still keeping up time. Again, this is a very surface level go over of the topic. I'm gonna leave you on one final thing to think about. How to practice up time. I recommend taking your ranged attack and chucking it into the void. While you're able to just mindlessly spam your ranged attack, you might not have been thinking about how much you've been doing it. But if you're forced to just stand there and watch, watch as you are unable to do anything for two, three, four possible attacks, you'll have no choice but to really consider, but what if I used other attacks and still dodged? Then when you finally get the gist, when you start to truly understand how much time you could have been attacking without a ranged attack, you can put it back on your bar. When you truly need your ranged attack, it's right there for you to use it. There is a time and place for ranged attacks. There is a time and place for the mages to constantly stay on the move because they have no choice. They have their instant casts too. Take it a little bit at a time and push to be better in every way you can. Uptime really is one of the most key ways to keep your damage up and just do better with mechanics. At the very least, next time you go to press your ranged attack as a melee, or walk more than just to the edge of an AoE, consider if you really needed to take the action you just took. This was a pretty specific guide, even more so than the previous ones, but I did feel there was room to introduce the topic to a more newbie-ended player base. We don't need to go as far as calculating movements, optimization and all that, but there definitely is a common problem of less experienced players running around way too much or spamming ranged attacks for no reason. ABC and keep yourself in range. You can have your cake and eat it too. You just need to really look at what you're doing. Take care and may the power of an Anidhogsley waste to your enemies.